came in a flash, a vision of that infinite instant. A thousand preachers shouting, prancing, dancing in meaningless gyrations before a vested horde. Yet their lips moved not, nor was made a sound save the wind. because their eyes are blind their tongues are dumb because their ears are deaf there is no life in their mouth because death is in their hearts for the greatness of the sin proceeds from the greatness of his love whom they have offended of the spirit will not return unto him void. Amen. The word of the spirit will not return unto him void. Amen. Came in a flash of vision of that infinite instant. A thousand preachers shouting, prancing, dancing in meaningless gyration. Before a vested horde, yet their lips moved not, nor was made a sound save the wind. Then a word I did hear. Their lips are closed because their eyes are blind. Their tongues are dumb because their ears are deaf. There is no life in their mouth because death is in their hearts. The greatness of the sin proceeds from the greatness of his love, whom they have offended. up thy way with thorns and I'll, I will bring a wall against her and she shall not find her paths and she shall follow after her lovers but she shall not overtake them and she shall seek them but not find them then shall she say I will go and return to my first husband for it was better uh, with me than now for she did not know that I gave her the grain and the new wine and the oil and multiplied her uh, silver and gold, which they use for Baal. Therefore, I will take a, back my grain in the time thereof and my new wine in the season thereof and will pluck away my wool and my flax, which should have covered her nakedness. And now I will uncover her lewdness in the sight of her lovers and none shall deliver her out of my hand. I will also cause her mirth to cease, her feasts and her new moons and her Sabbaths and all her solemn assemblies. And I will lay waste to her vines and fig trees, whereof she hath said, These are my hire, and my lovers have given me. And I will make them a forest, and the beasts of the field shall eat them. And I will visit upon her in the days of Balaam, unto which she burned incense, when she decked herself with her earrings and jewels, and went after her lovers, and forgot me, saith Yahweh." Okay, so that is a, a verse that was just sitting there that sort of looked like it, it kind of is a good prelude for this because 
this is, um, you know, the judgment. And, you know, just like in the days of the Old Testament, now Hosea, that's Hosea 2, just like in those days of Hosea um, and in the days of disobedience and the days of, and what it really always comes down to is they make an altar for Baal. They make an altar for Satan. They sacrifice unto Satan. And then, of course, uh, the Lord takes away the blessings that have been there. So in a general sense, you have the United States, you already have Europe, you have everywhere where this is going on, going through that same judgment Hosea prophesied regarding Israel uh, in the ancient time. And we have it here revisited again in this time. Now, in prelude to this kind of thing on Daniel and Barack Hussein Obama and his powers and his powers of sorcery and his and so forth, and the idea of keeping going with them and to destroy many, as many say he's like a judgment to the, 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 the world, but many are reluctant to say, well, he could be the last king. Um, and so just, you'll take this podcast, which was done yesterday as inspired speculation. Um, and again, from time to time, I'll say, look, I, I, you know, I can't prove this. And I can't prove he's the last king. And even, you know, someone pointed out that they felt, you know, he's not the beast. It's got to be someone like Tony Blair who'll make a peace covenant with Israel. Do not count out the idea of a peace covenant in this term with Israel that will be um, short-lived. Uh, don't think that this isn't going, this isn't on the table. This is on the table because this peace treaty must come from Barack Hussein Obama. It can't come from a Tony Blair or, or anywhere, any other kind of person. You know, people used to say Prince Charles is the Antichrist. I think we have to get away from this idea that there's this man, the Antichrist, or that, you know, this idea of the end of time, um, time ends and that's it. And then it's, you know, on to the New Jerusalem. You know, it's, it's, I ran with this and I run with it. But now I'm saying in the aftermath of it, I think we need to be a little, you just need to try the spirits and say, you know, that could be wrong. And I'm leaving myself that room and saying, you know, I am not completely sure, for example, about what time is. And because of that, uh, we see the same parallels here today with this one. We've seen other fierce kings before. They thought Adolf Hitler was that same embodiment. So you see, there's nothing new. It's like a repeat. But one thing we do know for sure, and that is that the, uh, the, the, the mirth has been taken away. The, um, we are in the time of famine in the land of plenty. This is clearly impossible. It's not possible what's happening right now. It can, I mean, for this evil to thrive, you know, in the time of Russia with Russia's vast resources, or take a place like Mexico where you have, you know, no middle class, but basically poverty and then a wealthy class, uh, with the resources Mexico has, it's not possible for there not to be prosperity. It's not possible, you, you know, unless, unless the people have run after Baal, unless the people have run after the devil, unless the people have sold out to the wrong side. And if that's the case, then no matter how much plenty you have in your land, we have tremendous resources in the United States and the people are not prospering. Just like the people of Libya, I go into this later about Barack Obama and what he's done with Libya and, 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 and Egypt and how he's really the king over those two. But he is dividing that land for spoil for himself. The Libyans aren't getting it. The Egyptians aren't getting it. It's him and those who back him, his inner court of, of people we don't know. The other thing is people do worship this man, and I've never seen the kind of things we've seen so far. So enjoy the uh, podcast, but keep with it. With, you know, I, I try to make the most convincing argument that this is it. And this is the time. And at the same time, there's a kind of an ambivalence because so many times before there has been the thinking that there would be an end of time and yet there wasn't an end of time. And, you know, the last thing I want is people to get their hopes up that, oh yeah, this is the end of time. And then have it sort of, you know, uh, look, if the guy goes down into defeat, you, you, you can say, well, he had these powers. He had this power to hypnotize people. He had this power to, to reign and to, to conquer wonderfully, to destroy wonderfully, to do the things spoken of in the book of Daniel 7, 9, 8, and 11. And 
at the same time, you know, some people think, okay, well, but let's say we get through this period and it swings the other way. And, you know, right now it doesn't look like that. It doesn't look like there's any swinging the other way ever. But I've seen that before. So that's just my proviso going into it. And with that, I bid you shalom. And uh, so listen up. Greetings in the name of the Most High. You'll be happy to note that I just had the most brilliant little thing going on. Well, not brilliant, but repetitive. And, uh, and <laughs> while I was speaking, the, uh, I didn't realize the batteries had gone out on my H2. This is uh, my roving recorder. This is also a recorder that I use for uh, wild sound and um, ambient sounds and We'll be using that a lot for an upcoming project. But anyway, so here we are. And I just have to do this to you. We're not done with this. Uh, Matthew 7, 25. He shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. But... The judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion and consume and to destroy it unto the end. Okay. And we just continue into eight. Just, I just want to do this contiguously. And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. This is the fierce countenance king. Not by his own power. He shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper in practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. And through his policy, he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand and he shall magnify himself in his heart and, and by peace he shall destroy many and shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. Dealing with the last king issue here. Let me just continue now. And the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god, and shall speak marvelous things against the god of gods, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished, for that that is determined shall be done. Neither shall he regard, regard the god of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any god, for he shall magnify himself above all, and in his estate he shall honor the God of forces, and a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and precious stones and pleasant things. Thus shall he do the most, uh, in the most strongholds with a strange God, whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory, and he shall cause them to rule over many, and shall divide the land for gain. And at the time of the end shall the king of the south push at him, the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind, with chariots and horsemen and with many ships, he shall enter into the countries and shall overflow and pass over. He shall enter into the glorious land and many countries shall be overthrown, but these shall escape out of his hand, even Edom and Moab and the chief of the children of Ammon. He shall stretch forth his hand also under the countries and the land of Egypt shall not escape, but he shall have power over the treasures of gold and silver and over all the precious things of Egypt and Libya and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps, but Tidings out of, the, out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. Therefore, he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to take away many. And he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas of the glorious holy mountain. Yet shall he come to his end and none shall help him. So Daniel 7, 8, and 11, when you read it contig contiguously, it's just... There's a certain pattern and a certain personality established, one we've never seen before. And of course, you know, I just have to apply Barack Hussein Obama to that. And I just can't help myself for all those who are being, I know people like to be cautious and not have, you know, every generation thinks that's the time of the end, Brother Z, you know, it's not over till the fat lady sings, people will say. And on and on and on, they will say... And they will have their caution. 
And that's fine. All I'm saying is, if the shoe fits, baby, you know? And in this case, the shoe fits like a glove. The shoe, it is the shoe. That is, that. and when you look at the world, well, let's take Egypt, for example. Obama conquered Egypt and put his Lieutenant Morsi in. The real news doesn't report that, but we're dealing with the, the Morsi's not the king or the pharaoh of Egypt. Morsi claimed absolute power for Obama, who is the pharaoh of Egypt. And that's how history will remember him, or at least if there's anyone writing a Bible, something real, rather than the news media. Egypt is not autonomous. autonomous. The same thing over the, uh, the, all the, the gold, you might wonder, what about all the precious oil in Libya? Um, and who's going to divide up that spoil? You know, well, he has his claim there as well. Um, as far as the God of Forces, Hurricane Sandy, God of Forces, sorcery, craft, witchcraft. He'll win the kingdom through flatteries and through trickery, witchcraft, win re-election through witchcraft. People still don't understand the election. They're still flummoxed by what happened. What happened was magic on the highest order. The storm, the various people hypnotized, coming forth like Christie to do Obama's bidding, and all these people. Now we have Romney coming forth to go to the White House because Obama has the power to hypnotize people, to control people. It's not his power, but it's with what's in him at this point. In Daniel, we're dealing with the last king. What happens after that is this. Just like what happens in the parallel would be Revelation 18, of course. And I know we've gone over and over and over this, and everybody has, but I just cannot help myself. We must keep going over this. Now, here's what happens. So after the last king, the kingdom and do dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall, sh sh shall serve and obey Jesus. Shall serve and obey Yahweh, Jesus, Yeshua, the One. All will serve this king that crowns the, from Genesis to Revelation, there's a crown. The new Jerusalem comes down as a bride adorned, is, you know, the bride, as the people um, no longer need light because, friends, those of the path, those who know the way, those who understand Jesus is the one, the only way, the truth and the life. He is God. He is creator. He is the word. And he comes in many forms. He comes in many forms. God did punish us, throwing us here, for things, I believe, that happened in the past or in another time or in another dimension, actually, was more accurate. Because you do reap what you sow. You don't get heaped on... Oh, no, no, no. We've already had the wars. We've already had people suffering who were believers who by every right should have been scurried away by the Lord because they didn't deserve that. The punishment coming is, you know, I mean, what's death? It's no worse than the worst times of the past, like the Great Flood. It's just different. It may be fire this time, nuclear war, but it's earth changes, hits from the sun, but it's still different. You know, you have the angel and the sun. You have all kinds of angelic forces that are to be released who in, the, in and of themselves, once released, can easily destroy the entire kingdom of Satan. What we've had here is the kingdom of Satan. We've had it from the beginning. Everyone nods and winks and lies about it, and people die because they get too close to it. They try to expose it. They try to fight it with carnal means. You can't do that. I told you about Obama. You're not going to remove him from office. So we're going to watch this and see. You're not going to remove him. He won the kingdom through a strange God. He won the re-election through a strange God. The time is not done. Now, I read some rabbis' accounts of, uh, of this, and they had, and I don't know how long ago this was. It's on the internet. And these rabbis were basically looking at the prophetic word and trying to figure out, you know, and they all had Barack Hussein Obama. 
and they say he is the last king, but that I think the mistake they made, which is an easy mistake to do when you're dealing with a eternal and time and space, you know, coalesced, you're dealing with a multidimensional reality here, not a single dimension. And people keep trying to do it in a linear way and it's never going to happen. Just like <laughs> people will take great issue with me of hooking those scriptures together. But you know what? If the shoe fits, when, oh, no, no, brothers, they're talking about different times and different kings. No, no, you don't understand. We're unsealing the book, brother. We're taking it out of the context of linear thought. We're putting it into, are those verses about different people? Really? I just read them right in a row. Could you tell? No, we're dealing with, and the, the book of Revelation is the same thing. We come up to a point of the unsealing and then all the plagues and things. And then we come to another point and then it's like, e here we go, another angle, all the plagues. So it's like a doppelganger in Revelation. So the plagues happen. You can't kill a third of the sea and everybody else over and over again. So obviously there's a doppelganger there. There's, there's different angles of looking at the same thing. So in Daniel, we're dealing with, and the, the last few chapters of Daniel deals with, the, what does it deal with? The last kingdom and the time of the end that is to be sealed until the time of the end, which is now, so it's unsealed. And the question is, when I keep going through it, and I sound like a broken record, but I, you just have to understand, I just keep being inspired to read those. I'm like, really? Does it really say that? I'm kind of almost astonished that it says the same thing again, you know, and, um, you, you know, and, and then of course, after this final king, uh, the, you know, and after the, uh, you know, and it talks about the, the, the final kingdom, of course, is Jesus, the forever kingdom, and that comes after the last king. And that's what, the, that's what we should be concerned about when we read Daniel. Basically, what do we want to know? Is this the last king? And is this the time that was sealed unto the end? And if this is the last king, does this mean our Lord is going to come and set it right and take the curse off of us for real? I mean... We have it off of us in the spiritual realm. We have the inheritance of it, but we're not. Are you experiencing uh, the bliss and joy of being a, um, a light being running around? I've got numerous people that agree th with, and many people that I've talked to lately have come to the conclusion, people that study and read the word all the time, they come to the conclusion that we are to be like beings of light, which we already knew because... Guess what? In our memories, we remember that. Autonomous beings of light, co-equal uh, in reign as Christ. In other words, at that state, you know, like the angels, if you will. You know, spirit beings. Um, and people keep trying to say, what's the quantity of the quality? And I'm just here to say, it doesn't really matter. Look, a being of light the new Jerusalem, if you will, uh, another dimension, the, the heaven and earth fade away because heaven and earth are not necessary. Heaven and earth are no longer necessary, so they fade away because the being of light exists in another dimension. Otherwise, you'd be walking down the street and see beings of light running around. Occasionally, there's a bleed through here and there, but typically, people don't see beings of light running around. We know they exist, and we know that angels morph into humans and disguise themselves among the people, work in the inside of it. And we know that. We know for a fact that uh, from testimonies that people have encountered such beings, we know that the, uh, the wars have been such that um, if we ever did get to a nuclear war... I mean, let me just go over some of the prophetic uh, fulfillment here. One... Today, they're talking about bulldozing Detroit completely, but not just Detroit, but many cities are going to be unincorporated. In other words, they're going to be shut down. Um, that in and of itself doesn't mean anything until you multiply that by all the cities in the nation that under a, a global conflict, and, and you could see the conflict with Russia and China in here, 
as I was reading, you see that these, that Obama will get himself into quite a fight, that Russia will not be his friend. It won't be like Red Dawn where the North Koreans land on the West Coast and then the Russians on the East and then the communists take over in an overt way. Although I th found that movie, the new remake of Red Dawn to be absolutely great, you know? And I realized the people have changed. Obama changed the people and got reelected. He changed the times and he changed the people so that it will never be the way it was, which is okay with me because look, if this is the time of, if he's the last, hey, great, my Lord's coming. This whole thing's gonna be overturned. My, I knew that I was born for the end because I would go confront the churches about the fact that all of them practice satanic ritual abuse. And I uncovered that. And people thought I was nuts. Now it's like, yeah, but we can't talk about it. In other words, they're all sold out to the devil. That was like one mission of mine. The Lord sent me to these churches. You know I've said this. I don't want to be a broken record here, but I've, part of my own calling had to do with like an Elijah spirit confronting the corruption of Satan having his headquarters in the church. Well, when I turn to Revelation, I go, oh, confirmed. All the churches are of Satan. Okay, great. Except the church of Philadelphia, which are those disconnected lambs out there, soon to be joined by everybody else, which is the bride of Christ, ultimately. But again, those letters are written to the church in Asia, but when you unseal the book of Revelation, it's a letter to us today. You see what I mean? Babylon refers to, you know, the city in Iraq, but Mystery Babylon, is the, the second Babylon, refers to, you know, say Washington, D.C. and all its tentacles if you like, or the heart of, or, or Wall Street, if you like. You know, the mystery is that the, that same God of forces and those spirit gods, Obama's not out of his mind. You have to understand, the obelisk and the reflecting pool in Washington, D.C., right outside his window of the Oval Office, is it outside his window in the Oval Office? Can, Trish, can you see the obelisk from the Oval Office? Do you remember? Okay, but you can see it. I think so. But let's just, let's just understand, that's the thing that he uses to appease his God, to get his power. He doesn't have to go look for a secret uh, a satanic or mystery school or some kind of mystery religion somewhere in Washington, D.C. His temple is out in the open. His temple is the apotheosis of George Washington himself, the ultimate Freemason. Freemasonry worships Lucifer. And all of Washington, D.C. is laid out. You know, there's pagan symbols like the pentagram and things like that. But basically, the obelisk is used via the reflecting pool for the contacting of spirits and powers to affect rule over the people. And so Obama's not out of his element. It's just he's in the temple. He's in you know, they're holy of holies, and he's now blaspheming, you know, God and Jesus and setting himself up as God. Jamie Foxx said, our Lord and Savior, Barack Obama, and he was kind of joking, a little tongue-in-cheek. No, 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 that, that is how they see him, and they do worship him because they're sold to the devil. I'm sorry, Jamie Foxx looks like a great guy, but, you know, if he's saying that, if he's serious, then his... Soul belongs to Satan. That, but see, don't think that's so weird. That's pretty typical of the human population. Most people's souls in America belong to Satan. And they're happy with that so long as no one finds out. If no one finds out, it's okay. You got me? It's okay. If no one finds out, it's all right. We all cover for everybody. So no one needs to know your little secret of how you got your position. And people are scared, they want job, they want money, so they do it. And there's many centers for you to lose your soul, many groups, even PTA meetings would be a good place to, to make you uh, pass through to the other side. Uh, the, you know, it's common. 
It's common. The average people do it in poor villages around the world. What's the most? Who has the grip on power? The witches. Witchcraft, sorcery, voodoo, etc. That sort of thing. Okay, uh, Santeria. And you go, oh, that's for poor people. No, it's not, because when our dignitaries would go to Haiti, they would go to meet with the high priestess and priestesses to get juju for winning the election. Just the same thing Barack Obama has done. So it does say a God that his others knew not. Yes, because the powers he has are more powerful than Bill Clinton, more powerful than George Skull and Bones uh, Bush, more powerful than um, others we've seen. I believe Jack Kennedy was like a lamb because he wasn't going to go along with the program. He rebelled and he got, and, it, and you know, we saw what happens when you try to fight it in flesh and blood. Well, God bless him, but, you know, he made a calculated risk and, and he paid the price. He went up against that God. The, the Federal Reserve is magical. Washington, D.C. is magical. The election wasn't stolen. It was magic. He did it through trickery. It was done because he, Barack Hussein Obama, had the power where others in the past hadn't had that power. That is why, not because of who he is, going to Occidental, Columbia, covering up the records of being a C student, whatever, you know, uh, and all that. He was chosen because they believed he is this person or they believed he would be possessed, if you will, that's a more accurate way of looking at it, by this force which will eventually subdue all the kingdoms for a while and give him the ultimate power. Remember this, Morsi is the new dictator of Egypt. Obama, and, and Morsi is Obama's lieutenant. And he's going to be hostile toward Israel, and Netanyahu has to play that game because if Obama gets mad, he can pull all the plane parts and the parts for Israel's military so they can't defend themselves if Obama gets up in a huff. So they're stuck, okay? Now, he hasn't gone directly against them. Um, the, the word Jesus now, almost illegal. They've gotten rid of all the mangers now. The word of God has been put out of this country totally. And so the point I'm trying to say is, and one of my friends thinks that well, the church will be cleansed when they get persecuted. Then they'll wake up from the satanic uh, ritual abuse and satanic practices done in churches and even doing rituals on pagan holidays in the middle of the night. Yes, we found out about that too. Didn't want to know about that. I didn't want to have to confront them, but I am. And I've simply lost interest in continuing to point out what they do and who they are. Because the people, and this is why, because the people want it. They don't want to be at odds with the world. They want to be in sync with the world. And the church reflects that. And that's all you're looking at. It's the norm. Maybe not for you people that were never connected to it or been losers all your lives or whatever. You wondered why. Well, this is why. This is why. And those people that... Uh, you know, hooked up. Um, you got about two seconds to breathe, Buster. You better find a way to repent. And, you know, hey, a good way is to bless people like, like me. <laughs> Rather than cursing me for saying the truth, why don't you just bless me? No, you don't have to send me anything. Just say blessings to you in the name of Jesus or something. Lord, please help me find a way out of this. And he, before the crash... Don't you want to, you want to, oh, do you realize that if you die in Satan, you know, true to your school because you think that, what, bad things will happen to your kids and grandkids and all that, that's rubbish. They're individuals. The Lord takes care of children. You need to trust. But see, all of this could have been averted had you trusted the God of gods, the God Yahweh, the God Jesus, the one the creator of heaven and earth and all things in between. That one knows you, knows every hair on your head. He that's in you is greater than he that's in the world if you'll be of Christ. So nothing they do is of any effect. And even if you 
lose your carnal life here, you go straight to the Father. You are in the kingdom. You're never going to leave the kingdom. And in a little while, you'll be, the whole thing is over. You know, there's no time in that kingdom. So it's a constant process in dealing with this. There was a reason the Lord wanted to make all this. And a reason it has a beginning, middle, and end. And a reason there's so many years meted out. And a reason it's set in time and space with planets and other things that are revolving and having their own cycles and time timelines to extinction because everything has a timeline to extinction in this created reality. There is a reason, and it's God's reason. And this place couldn't be without good and evil. And But it's not a distribution of good and evil equally. Being that it's Satan's kingdom and Satan's world, there is a cheating factor. So it's 80% evil, and I think, or maybe more, and 20%. 10% good, which is skewed the wrong way. God allows it because obviously it will reach equilibrium when the pendulum goes the other way. It will be knocked out forever and then true stasis will emerge and then the new Jerusalem is eternal life without the sufferings of the carnal world or the flesh world where things come and go in and out of existence. They're born, they suffer, they die, etc. Those days are over. But in a sense, this was a service that we did. Those of you who've suffered terribly, and I know if you belong to God, you've probably have and wondered. Many days you've wondered, shoot, Lord, have you forsaken me? Do you really, I mean, in other words, you didn't do anything. You're too tired to do anything wrong. You're too hurt to do anything wrong. You're just like, the wounded, walking wounded, just kind of going through and wondering, Lord, have you forsaken me? I'm just here. I don't even know the purpose. What, what are you doing? Is there any happiness at all? Is there anything that we can, anything at all? And the answer is no, there isn't anything here. No, it's, a, it's an illusion. I'm sorry, but you know, you... you for whatever reason, you, you know, I'm sure it's justified you wound up here and you're expected to walk through it. But I don't feel connected here to anything, Lord. I'm not part of the PTA and I'm not part of the, the cancer drive downtown, the bake sale and the, you know, the church choir and the, you know, little league and I'm not part of anything, Lord. Lord, why would you bring me here to make me the brunt of a joke where... They just, you know, if you're not part of all those things, they just attack or distrust or keep you out or make it so you can't do anything and, you know, then laugh at you while you're sitting there on the corner begging for crumbs. You mean, you, how, why, et cetera, et cetera. Now, Barack Obama, if he is the embodiment of Satan, the thing he's able to do is play Santa Claus and... I've never seen this before, but really provide, you know, hopes and dreams for people in exchange for what he tells you telepathically. The message Barack Obama gives telepathically is worship me and I will take care of you. Fall in line and you'll be given instructions on a daily basis what to do, what to say, what to think. Total control. Don't need a microchip. Don't need to be blasted from space. Don't need microwaves. Don't need satellites. Don't need secret messages and audio recordings. No, it's that powerful that it's just on and power. And if you sign on with Barack Obama, your worries will be over. And so now they will cheer that on and they will defend him into totalitarianism. The question we have is, is he the last? Is he the king? And I'd say the evidence, because all these people saying he's a wimp, he's a wuss, he's an empty suit, they all underestimated the situation. They didn't, after I've seen what he's done, he's no wuss and wimp. He's the most powerful man on earth. What are you talking about? Nobody can oppose him. Did you see him purge the generals? He did that like he backhanded them. He, like, no problem. 
to the entire U.S. military. Using the military to conquer Egypt? No problem. Conquer Libya? No problem. He owns Libya and he owns Egypt. It's his. But like the devil, he works behind the scenes so that people don't understand. He is the king of America. And that's why the news media will fall in lockstep because they are under his power. He owns the media, he owns the United States, and he owns everything in it. Save for the saints. And he's fixing. There you go. You southern people like when I say fixing, huh? <laughs> I, live, I live close enough to Texas I can say fixing, right? I live out in the wild, wild west. I'm fixing to do it. He learned me a thing or two, right? <laughs> so I'm a fixing to tell you this. <laughs> The war on the saints is on, baby. It's on. It's on right now. What are you talking about? Why would I come to the planet if it wasn't on? It would be a waste of my life, wouldn't it? There's no other purpose for me but the end. Zed, it's just like the end. My whole calling is the end. My whole purpose is always, wherever I go, is the end. I am the end. When I was in school, it was the end of one regime. The school collapsed. When I went to Buddhism... Pow, the whole regime collapsed. When I went to Christian churches, boom, the whole regime collapsed. Then eventually I got ev evicted. No, I didn't throw the pastors off their pulpits. I confronted them. I said, you need to get away from your Jesse wife and the kids you've sodomized, you freak, and go out to the desert and throw yourself into sackcloth and ash and beg God to forgive you and then never show your face here again. Never, ever take another pulpit, you traitor. And I say that to most all evangelicals uh, as well. You congregations, you put up with this. This is your problem. You should have thrown this guy out on his ear. Now you're going to get mad because what? He lied to you. Oh, you mean the Obamacare microchip was really, that's really the, mar oh, oh no, it's too late. It will change you genetically with nanotechnology. Therefore, you will not be eligible to be redeemed. Your life is over. That's the second death, period. You know what? I don't even feel bad. I feel like, you know what? Well-deserved. Sorry, the shoe fit. I see what you've done to children. I see how you've had children go kill people to initiate them into the dark side in churches. I've seen that by the leaders, by the top people. <laughs> I can't even believe, why would you even, why are you even around Jesus? Why even be there? So, I have so little sympathy for you. You have no idea, you know, if the day would ever come when it's going to be your congregation, the Elijah spirits in your congregation will rise up and throw your ass onto the ground and tell you to get out, Satan. And they will reclaim. But that won't be until post-apocalypse, post-war time. There's going to be a war. And the cities will be destroyed. And it will look just like the book of Eli. I keep going back to those images. And just as brutal with cannibalism in America, people starving because, well, that's intentional. It, when Obama does that, he'll be copying Stalin. Stalin did the same thing to coalesce power. He let the people starve until they finally gave it up to him. And he turned the people on those who had things. Uh, just to show you, there was a guy, there was a, a guy who wrote an article yesterday, and I forget his name. Just forgive me for that. And basically, he was so mad about some people, the rich, having private generators during Hurricane Sandy, and the fact that they had these shows that we haven't taxed people enough. You're talking about something that costs a couple grand, maybe, maybe five for a good one. It's not like a huge deal. It's about the same as your home theater, which all the poor people have. So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 
But it was a big article about how they should not have been allowed to use those generators while the other people were suffering and creating cat class warfare and this whole tax thing. All this tax thing is, is totalitarianism. It's confiscating the wealth of people and they're going to start with a tax, a little bite. But the idea is the confiscation of all wealth. Remember, this last king will confiscate the land and the property. He will confiscate it and divide it for spoil and gain. He's stealing it. Obama, they're stealing it for Obama, who will gain by it. Personally, they've already given him a $25 million house in Kauai that he can go hang out in. Who gave it? $25 million? So, well, he, he's a public servant. Where did he get that money? He didn't get it from writing books. He's the king. He has a trillion if he wants it. And people have missed the point. You guys have all missed the point. You need to be on your knees, not going up in Congress with a debate. You can't win this debate. It's not about taxing. It's about punishing those who have property. Those, in other words, the whole idea is to say to people, we're going to fix the economy, put everybody out of work, then turn them against the people who are left, the remaining few who still have something, confiscate their wealth, uh, give it to Obama in the hopes that we all get handouts. That won't happen. The handouts are going to be cut off. Food stamps cut off. It will all be cut off because the sacrifice of America means the killing of Americans in the cities, destruction of the cities and destruction. However, that being said, he still needs the army to fend off attacks from the north, i.e. Russia and elsewhere. You could say China, if you like. Okay? So he's got that to deal with coming up, which will then also destroy the cities. But there will be no facility in place to give out food stamps. There'll be no, nothing in place to give out. You know, the whole plan is to use these people against these people, divide and conquer, and take the spoil for yourself. He's the king. He's not an elected official. When people start understanding that, then you'll understand the key to the last king, to Barack Hussein Obama. You don't even understand the key to what's going on here. The key is that he's not like a man. You're not dealing with a man here. Now, these events that will soon happen, well, anyway, I guess there'll be some of you who will remain cautious until you see all these things come to pass. Then you'll say, maybe you were right, or if they don't come to pass, I was wrong. Um, you know, granted, I am speculating a lot right here, but I haven't been one to do that. I've, I feel like my heart's latched onto this. You know, it latched onto it in 2008, but I kind of just frittered it away. You know, I kind of just backed away from it. You may, may remember some of those podcasts. So I kind of, I just said, you know, I left it like this. You read those verses, it's got to make you wonder, huh? Then I looked at the, um, a friend sent me a thing on the unsealing the book of Daniel, and they kind of, it's kind of like the Bible codes. I mean, I don't know how reliable it is, but a person did that, and the last name <laughs> entered into the unsealing is Barack Hussein Obama. Well, that's the same thing. The rabbis came to the same conclusion, Barack Hussein Obama. So I'm not alone, but I, I guess I become more solid in this and, and Rima about this. In other words, I can just keep going in the spirit because I think it just feels like, oh, you know, but, it, but see, it makes sense because I too have a chariot somewhere. I know, this is where I blow the talk. I have a chariot somewhere and a sword and a thing to do, and yet I'm here. And I'm just wanting to get back to what I was before I came here. And not, not, you know, I don't want to leave before, I don't want to leave through death. I want to actually leave through life as a frightening witness to people that, that the Lord, you just cannot, you can't put them in a box, you know? But, um, you know, oftentimes I prayed to God, I said, and to my friends, I, wherever they are, you know? And, uh, so 
each one of us has like a little key, a little role to play. Each one of us, and that includes every one of you listening, has a role to play here. You may not think, you know, you may not think you're very important, but without you, this would not take place. Without every one of you, you know, and without the other side, without everything that's here, it could not go forward. So you are important, and your kingdom is, is coming back, and you will have your kingdom, but you're under the most fierce test, and those who are being tested the most fiercely deserve the greatest reward, and you will have your reward. Uh, the Bible promises us that reward um, as a crown, which you will refuse because you don't need a crown, but I mean, in other words, you receive a crown that you refuse. The refusal of the crown is just, the, that's the final, t- if they give you a, a crown and you accept it and wear it around, you, you're going to be a loser. You're going to not understand what's going on. You don't accept the crown. There is no you to accept it in the future. You don't have a name like you have here. It's, it's not the same. There's no need. Remember the 24 elders around the throne, what do they do? They toss their crowns. Why? Because it's not necessary. You are the crown, dummy. It's you. You are the new Jerusalem. Okay, I know. I guess we have to calm down. Don't have a lot of time today. So <laughs> let's just roll it back and look at the, some other news items. We have um, the whole fiscal cliff discussion is going on right now. And I can assure you that... Uh, it's hot potato because no one wants to be seen as the guy who caves. Let me explain something. Barack Hussein Obama is going to get his way. And there is nobody going to filibuster that. And these Democrats that are on board with Obama, and increasingly more Republicans are, you may have noticed, because Obama is beyond, he's beyond Republicans and Democrats. He's beyond the Chicago way. It's got nothing to do with that. Something, it's supernatural. That's, the people marveled over the election. They marveled over the storm. They called it a gift from above. Well, it was a gift from below, not above. But they were right about one thing. It was supernaturally and uh, steered, if you will, but it, it, you don't need to sit there going, hmm, steer it. It just, the power is so great that it just happens just like that. Anyone who listens to Obama will be hypnotized and immediately put into the service of Obama as Lord and Savior. The memes are out there. Jamie Foxx was told what to say, and he said it. He's already hypnotized, along with everyone in Hollywood. They're hypnotized, too, and even the conservatives who are trying to work it out. You people that are following the politics too closely, unless you're really rooted in faith and God, led by the Holy Spirit, you, too, will become a victim in all this. You will become a victim. No one, and, and, and if, well, you don't want war to be waged against you. War is being waged against the saints. That's right. They have done it covertly, and eventually it will be overt, but you feel it, don't you? Your free speech, eventually they'll just be rounding people up for whatever reason, people who are of the faith. Some people think, as I just said, that will be when the, when the, when the, when the churches wake up. And I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't address that. No, they won't wake up. Let me just make it really clear. No, the churches won't wake up. And some will, a remnant in the commercial churches will, and that's it. No pastor will repent for being the, you know, a little whore of Babylon, you know, buggering the kids. Why do you do that? Well, because that's part of their culture. That's why. There's a hidden culture and a hidden kingdom right next to this one. And that's the rule they go by. Obama is the king. He's the pharaoh of Egypt. He's known by many other names. That's him, not of his own power, but it was bestowed upon him. What are you going to do? The people that recognize that are getting on their knees. Now that's What's happening in the spirit? That's exactly what's happening. And it's got nothing to do with politics. 
This whole thing has got to do with the king said he wanted taxes on the rich and reversed himself about the Bush tax cuts and felt embarrassed that he had allowed the Bush tax rates really to go forward. He said he'll never do that again. He demanded that he get his way. And he keep, kept repeating it for four years that he wanted to get his way or three years or whatever it is. It's about getting his way. Once the Republicans cave on taxes, that's it, game over. There is no more Republican Party. He conquered them where no one else has been able to do that. That will be the victory day for Barack Obama. The, this is the real news now. That's the victory day for Barack Obama. The pur he already purged the generals. And then he's going to purge the Republican Party. So they may still be there in name, but they will be servants of him. You know, they'll be there to fool the people because the people are easily fooled. All this is the kind and likeness and power of the Antichrist. All of it. All of it. Everything we've talked about today is Antichrist, the false messiah who will save you. Our Lord and Savior, Barack Hussein Obama. Now, if it's a doppelganger or triple ganger or something where it's going to happen in the future, a repeat, but I have never seen anything like this, nor has there ever been anything like this in United States history. And people thought that the United States, the heart of Mystery Babylon, the most powerful nation on earth, that rose to power so fast, one could only call it a mystery. <laughs> people had good intentions with this country, but corruption was already in at the very beginning. Just like in the book of Jude regarding the churches. They built a temple to Satan called Washington, D.C. It's a temple to Satan. That's all it is. If you understand the architecture and the ways of the people and the way this works, you'll be able to suddenly see through all the news and all the events going on, the real kingdom of Satan is coming up into view. You'll understand the rules and the way it works. If you understand who they think Obama is and who he may be, and you see events unfold, then when, with that in mind, you'll say, you see, confirmation after confirmation after confirmation. Now I can tell you the way the world is going. You will go through the news media. You'll see through all these things. You'll understand Barack Hussein Obama being the king or pharaoh of Egypt, how that's legitimately happened, has occurred, and is done. You'll understand that. And then from there, you can see the landscape of the other kings and the way it really is. The way it really is hasn't changed from the fall of man on. It's been Satan's world when Jesus was confronted. Satan told him, and it was Satan, I will give you all these kingdoms. You can be king of the world if you'll just bow down to me. You know, um, he couldn't offer that unless he owned them all and owned everyone in them. Period. I rest my case, and I am completely 100% right. Oh, they used to scoff. Yeah. I'm an atheist. You go on about Satan and ranting and raving. You sound like a lunatic. No, that's the God you follow and have buried. You've covered it up. You're under their control. You do what you're told. You have your rank, name, and serial number. You don't go by the rules of the state. You have another set of rules. And when Clinton talks about the set of rules to follow, and then you'll do okay in life, he's not talking about the rules uh, written in the laws. He's talking about the real rules. No, I am correct. You atheists say that, but you all serve the devil, period. You know, the devil was the first atheist, if you like. <laughs> you serve him. And my proof is, Again, you have your name, rank, and serial number, and you do what you're told because you want the money. You think you're under your own control, but many of you have now woken up to realize your life is not under your control. You do what you're told. You play by the rules in the hopes that you'll have a decent life. And all of you do that. And you were told to bury this whole idea of Jesus, Satan, all that, to reject it all, and you're completely 100% under robotic control. 
You don't write your own ticket. You think that you're under your own control and that one day you're going to get out of this system and you're going to retire off to a desert island or a tropical island somewhere, eat coconuts and lay in a hammock, and everything will be fine. And then, then you can get right with Jesus, which you've rejected and laughed at anyone who ever said the name. Religion itself is horrible. You'll say religion, you know, all these religions, a uh, terrible thing. The opiate of the masses, Mark said, hey, what you'll do is you'll say these religions, but you'll exempt Hinduism, Buddhism, paganism, and the rest of it. No, it's really Jesus. And perhaps to a lesser degree, it's the Jews. It's the Torah. You know, it's these Jews. It's their problem. And the whole world, you see, is going against the United States and Israel and the whole people that have become hypnotized and robotic automatons of Obama, uh, religious sycophants, because it's a religion Obama is, um, they dutifully turn against Israel because Israel's hurting the poor Palestinians, and they have this excuse over and over again, not seeing the real thing. Obama wants Israel. He wants to blaspheme the Holy of Holies. He will, under the guise of saving Israel, find a way to annex Israel in a, in a profound way that he can um, defile the temple and defile the sacred places with honoring his God in the place where Yahweh was supposed to be honored. He's done that in America. He will do that there. He's got a whole plan to subdue it for his kingdom, which is centered in Egypt, I suppose, in Libya, in other places. And um, he doesn't have to come clean. Benghazi, he could come clean on if he wants, but he won't. It doesn't have anything to do with Benghazi. It has to do with exercising his newfound power to be above the law and above all gods, it says. All gods. That means all laws. He's above all laws. If he wants to tell her when to be mom on Benghazi, even if he doesn't have to, even if there would be a logical explanation for it, he would do it just to exercise the power to show people they have nothing and he has all the cards. With him at the helm, then, let's go forward. There will be a nuclear war. Terrible, terrible fighting in the streets and riots. There will be a civil war between people and a war between other people. There will be coordinated military attacks against the invaders and the people that seek to invade. For example, if there's an attack on Egypt by the people, Obama will put it down. If, for example, Russia backs um, um, it's, it's hard to put your finger on because Obama is not going to work with the Russians. He's not going to work with Putin. He, he, he wants to get even with Putin. He's not going to work with the Russians. He's not going to work with the Chinese. So in that sense, he's not really going to be your enemy in the way you think. He's not trying to induce the Russians to bomb uh, the people and kill them all here just yet because without people, he has what? No power. No, he wants his kingdom and he doesn't want people to attack it. So when you look at it that way, you'll start to understand the military strategy and what's going on in the world rather than what the news media tells you. Then you can start to understand how it's going to work. Um, the whirlwind is another name for a nuclear war. So, you know, other kings will bring a whirlwind against this one and he'll fight back. And he'll win for a time. He'll win to the extent that he can go to Israel and he can place his tabernacles there. And he can, so we're looking at a long time. Is he going to leave at the end of another term? No, he, he doesn't plan to ever leave. There's no need for him to leave. He's the last king. What do they think they're going to get? They think on the other side of this war and the bloodshed that has got to happen and these conflicts that must be resolved, and they're believing that since he has such powers uh, over storms and energy, 
that he could have powers over other military forces. So that has to be tested, of course, and I believe it will be, that people will be very afraid of Obama to go against him militarily because he is so fierce, he, his power goes into the military. His power makes it win. His power makes his armies win. Whether the military would have won on their own without Obama, I don't think so, because I think it's magical power. It's destiny. It's, it's prophecy that has to win. It's God's word that must win. And God's word says, and I'll be, put a big, in parentheses, all caps, if this is the time spoken of in the book of Daniel of the end, dot, 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 okay? So we have that qualifier. If this is that, then I'm just telling you what you will see. Me, I believe that I wouldn't be here if it wasn't going to be at the end. I just feel that that's my signature. Zed, you know, it's just the end. Boom. There's, I relate to the other world. I don't, to the real world. This one has never appeared real because, shoot, people come and go so fast and they never get to do what they want to do anyway. And they never have enough money and they never have enough nutrition and they never have enough love. And then they die in the muck, you know, whatever it is, a hospital bed, the muck, their own crap, whatever. I just... I can't, sorry, that's not what I remember. But I can see why people would want to come here, you know, to win, to be king, to rule the world, to make their mark. You talk to these old guys who made their mark a dozen times over, and let me tell you something, they don't care that they made a mark. They're sorry they didn't serve God, period. And what does God want you to do? Well, he wants... Some of you go visit people in the hospital. Some of you go to visit people in prison. Some of you to put your lives at risk and talk the gospel and the word. Um, I don't know. Some of you to do healings in public places. I, I see that now healings in public places are going to become more prominent. And I say hallelujah to that. I'd love to see anything, any increase in the gifts of God during this increase in their satanic powers um, since I expect that fully, uh, game on, Let, let's see it. I know that there are certain powers that would appear like sorcery that people will have. Powers over physics, powers over weather, powers over bodily uh, injuries and uh, fates even. Power over a lot of things, but not the power to change God's word and destiny about the events that must happen. Now, I can also make an argument that it never ends. This is a stopping point. It's the end time for every generation that's here and every person that here goes through an apocalypse or an apocalyptic time because the times are so evil. And they just can't believe that when they finally pull the veil back, yep, it's not 50-50. It's 90-10. And those that do evil get rewarded. Yes! That's, the, that's it. That's why... Man suffers because he has to keep his mouth shut or he loses his spot. So he wrings his hands and suffers. He suffers a life of quiet desperation because he can't go tell his kids about this. You know, Eric Burden, the animals tried to do it in a song, 1968, called uh, House of 67. Oh, 66. Forgive me, moi. House of the Rising Sun. He said... Uh, Talking about gambling, but he said, tell, tell your children not to do what I have done, mama. You know, tell them not to do what I've done. And I, I just felt, I always felt that the double entendre, since most every song has a dual meaning, right? Because you can look like the news media, you look at this world through the news media, then there's the real thing that we're talking about now. So there's a double, double on everything. In a mirror world, that's what you'd expect to see. You think it's 50-50 good and bad? Oh, no. <laughs> it's evil 100%, which is out of whack and out of balance with equilibrium. It's out of balance with God's laws. It's out of, out of balance with the laws of physics. House of the Rising Sun. 
There is a house in New Orleans. Remember that? Trish, do you play that on guitar? That's called the rising sun. Remember? Those, hey, you old folk, you remember that? And it's been <laughs> the ruin of many a. Uh-huh. And Lord, I know I'm one. Right? Don't go that way. I always thought that was a metaphor for Satan's connectivity for the real world, you know, to get to bust on through the other side. And, and you know, the, the rich man and Lazarus. I just want to come back to earth and tell him not to do what I've done. Don't go that way that I went. Proverbs 1. Don't hang out with the collective that's going to wait collectively for spoil and share the spoil as a collective. The collective is those are them in Satan. Satan and his minions are a collective. Guess what? The government, what do they want to do? Take away the rights of the individual and put together what? Collective, because that's their religion. That's their God. And that's what you're seeing. So, listen, let me just leave you with this. What you must do, because I must go. We have to take a little trip here. So what you must understand is that what you're looking at, what you're looking at politically now, let me just leave you with this. Look carefully. It's the destruction of any and all opposition to Obama, just like purging the generals. It's the same thing the Communist Party, the Marxists do. It's not Marxism, it's Satanism, Luciferianism. And it's, it's, a, it's a recipe for misery. So it's the destruction of the Republican Party forever and ever. They'll be there, nod, wink, but they'll all now be in line. See, Obama's beyond party. This is beyond party. It's not party. It's the neutering of any kind of constitutional values, conservative values, religious values, Jesus, all that. It's the neutering of all of that. It's the shredding of the Constitution. It's the final end and the final nail in the coffin of America. It's not just the budget thing. It's breaking them and breaking their will and breaking them down so they never have the will to stand against anything again. It will be whatever Obama wants, Obama gets. And if he doesn't get it, it's because he feigned that he lost. But it was just a feint to make you think that he lost when he didn't. It's all part of the mind control trickery that goes on on a daily basis. But you got to keep coming back to the truth. This isn't about the budget cliff, the fiscal cliff. It's, 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 It's a misnomer. It's about overwhelming the system with debt that can never be repaid so that the people are put in chains and that the people all will speak with one mind. Barack, Hussein Obama, don't oppose him or life gets very hard. He is, in a sense, the embodiment of Satan in that sense. Because Satan offers the same play, the same offer to all individuals on the earth here are are given the offer, usually um, when they're kids, coming into high school, whatever, they're given the offer that, you know, you could be cool and hip and make money and have a great life if you come over here with us. And that's every generation thinks they're the only generation... But you have to agree to never speak about it and mock people who are religious. Mock anyone who says anything. Right? And then you can be somebody. Yeah, you get to be somebody, little river band. We heard about the lonesome loser beaten by the queen of hearts, i.e. Satan, every time. (laughs) Devil, you're to be mocked as a fool. Amen. I mean, it's hilarious when you, when you break it down. When you really get to the real thing that's happening here, it's ridiculous. It's pathetic. It's laughable. It's hilarious. Well, we'll see how hilarious it is when we punish you, you Brother Z. Well, guess what? You can... Yeah, I know. You can punish me... If God allows it, 
If he allows it, I take my grievance, who? To my father. I don't take it to you. I don't want to be in a court of law with you. You cheat. You play trickery. I go to my father. Lord, I'm being treated unfairly. Look at this. I'm being punished for no reason. Lord, you're the only place I can go. And he's the only place I can go when that happens. But (laughs) my thing is, my being cool and not saying a thing about what's going on has never gotten me any anywhere and never in fact i get hurt worse when that happens i told the lord i'd give him a podcast yesterday then somehow it didn't happen i felt bad about it all day and so today i said lord i'm gonna make it up i'm gonna give you one i gave you my best today you got my best now i gotta go you know how i hate to go once i get going (laughs) but just think about it. You know, and maybe this is just an illusion. You know, I'm, I'm going to leave myself a little room. Could be that, you know, Obama leaves office eventually and, you know, World War III is averted and everyone becomes good little socialists here and gets in line and, you know, kumbaya with Europe. Europe's pathetic. You see, Europe and the United States, are, I believe all this is mystery Babylon. You know, the mystery of Babylon is... The power doesn't reside in the United States. It's Belgium, right? (laughs) Some obscure place like that. You know, some little guy living in in a little modest house in Belgium. He runs the whole world, you know? So there's a big power grab by Obama. You know, it's it's that kind of thing you don't know. Uh, I'm speculating on Belgium, but you know, you know, there's a little guy somewhere, you know, some unassuming, almost like a common man of the people, having his espresso or his latte, you know, in the little village and, you know, very unassuming, who no one would suspect, you know, that's, that's Satan, right? <laughs> oh, it's supernatural. Oh, gosh, anything can happen. You pray over each other to heal. Instant healing, instant everything. It's just push-button um, miracles right now. So that's good. Yes, people that have dealt with me and been nice to me, they found. And I could say the same thing as Satan. People that have been nice to me, they've all done really well. People that have been mean to me, bad, you know, evil, not not just mean, but I mean, you know, you know what I mean. Yeah, murderously evil or whatever, but being really nice and playing the satanic game, that sort of thing, setting traps, they haven't done so well. I stand on the promise of God, you know, just this promise of I'll bless thee that bless the you that, you know, whatever, I'll curse them that curse you, you know? And I have to put myself in my people, Israel, in that category under Christ and apply that even though it's out of time from when it was said. I still have seen that. L- let me put it this way. I've seen that to be true. No, I don't look for people to be cursed. I, I'm going through my own life. I don't have time to do that. I have time to waste looking around on Facebook for my enemies, as people have done with me, and wait around on Facebook and study them. You know, you don't have to be their friend. You can watch them online, right? Watch and wait for your moment. You can get them. Get them for what? For your stupid God that's about to fail here pretty soon? For your little lousy life where you're going to just become old and gray and withered and dead in a minute? And no one will be there to help you and no one will care after you're dead. Is that what you're going to defend? Are you kidding me? You need to be my friend and the friend of all those who are the believers, who are walking the path of Christ. Help them out rather than just persecute them. There will be a time where you people forming the underground, sheltering a brother or sister at times, you know, or whatever it is under that time of the post-apocalyptic time, that will be a glorious time for the bride of Christ. Ah, yes. These times are going to be awesome for the real church. And the real church will emerge, as it only could, in these times. This is the Super Bowl, if this is it. Now, other people have said this is it again, again, and again. But I got to go back to my Lord and say, Lord, why did you make me? I wasn't here to do the status quo. Not in my nature. It's not the way I was made. I'm not here 
to tear stuff down with no solution like a revolutionary. Been there, done that. I believe that's part of my punishment right now. No, not here to be a revolutionary. I'm here to serve the almighty God, my Lord, my God. There is no me, just you, Lord. Period. And the sooner we all get that attitude going, the sooner we're going to start laughing and kicking our heels up. But if you keep going in your own understanding and getting bummed out with the news and getting bummed out with everything, it's because you're not putting any thought or attention on the Lord and the Holy Spirit and the joy of being in the Lord. These days will be the most joyous. You're putting all your worry into yourself and your needs and praying constantly about Will I have enough to eat? Will I have this? Will I have that? Please don't fire me, Lord. Whatever. And you're miserable because you see it's all crumbling. You're wondering how long you can hold your position before you too go down. Is that, that's what they're doing. You don't want to do that. You live victorious in Christ. This is now your opportunity to get him to help you. I mean, he'll, look, he's, he's blessed me in so many ways. I can't even believe it. Things that shouldn't, and people know me, they think, that shouldn't even be there. But I also have curses or what I think, you know, infirmities and, you know, I'm not getting any younger. And there was a lot of things I thought I wanted, but then I realized, let me, let me, this took a lot of hard years to be able to come to this. But here it is. I didn't miss anything. I've been able to survey all the kingdoms of Satan and all the guilds and all the possible futures and all the possible careers and all the possible paths I could have had rather than being a God person. I've always been the God person, right? I've always been talking about this. Even when I was a little kid. I've always, this has been it. And, you know, accused of being, you know, a dreamer and your head's in the clouds and you're nuts, and you know, I'd be celebrating victory, going around kicking my heels up, and people say, you're supposed to be miserable, damn it! Back when I was a kid seeing a psychiatrist, one time the shrink, this was like in, in Beverly Hills, a Beverly Hills shrink, how, how classic is that? But guess what he was? Army intelligence. <laughs> yeah, his name was Richard Rosenthal, and I don't know if he's still alive, or whatever happened to him, you know. But anyway, he would get so mad at me when I would, you know, when he'd come see me in the nut house and he'd come in, because they'd come in every day to see you. And he'd see me, I would go, I'm just having the best time. And, and he goes, you are not having a good time. I'm having a good time. You know what I did? And he told me, here's what I did over the weekend. I got to go out and to, to hang out with... Uh, Chris Christopherson and some other people and whatever, celebrities, you know. And uh, we went here, we did that, we had dinner. So I'd say my weekend was better than your weekend. And I said, no, it wasn't. I had a great weekend here. <laughs> Just, he goes, you have fantasies of omnipotence. And so isn't that weird? <laughs> he was actually getting so perturbed that he had to compete with me. Here I am. You know, with no freedom, you know, I'm under, at this time I'm like 17, 16, something like that. I have no freedom. And um, I'm, I'm going to the shrink and then in his office because I, you know, then eventually I had to go from home, my parents' home to his office. And I'd say I had this great weekend and he gets so mad because what he wanted me to say is this. Dr. Rosenthal, I am miserable I had a horrible weekend. I'm having a horrible life. Please help me to, to fix this. I'll do anything. Ding. <laughs> okay. Oh, gosh. Just, I got to, well, it's a little memoir for me at the end. Um, you know, why not? I, just, who cares at this point? But I think that was just a hilarious story. That a guy who was so well-connected and so on top of it, he knew all the celebrities. Could probably because he's the shrink to their kids, right? So he's hanging out with them, and he's, and he's boasting about what a great weekend he had. To me, a lowly, stupid patient. I mean, why? You know, just a, a kid. Uh, you know, but why would he feel like competing with me? Because he wanted that freedom I had, even though I was, 
he, th- he said, you've got to be in denial. You can't possibly be happy. And I wasn't happy. He was, he was right. I was in denial. That, but <laughs> it's funny. Okay. Blessings to each and every one of you. Zef Daniel, Zedja Studio Tracks uh, coming your way as we're just finished the build out. And, you know, yeah, we had to c- continue to build it out. But now we're kind of ready to go. And you'll hear a last track I put up was, uh, was not mastered by this studio. It was just a nice mix. It was called uh, uh, Fought Back Anyway. Okay, but now I'm going to put it up. I took it down because now I got my mastering gear fixed. So now we're going to run it through the mastering process and a big fat version of it that just kicks you right in the chest. Uh, But it's really clear. Like you can turn it all the way up to 11 and have no distortion. So that's going to be coming, even if an MP3, yeah. So that's coming your way. Um, Though some of you already have the track, you'll be a chance to have it and... It's kind of a special little song. I never did go to a major chord resolution on it. Like someone said, why didn't we go to the major? I think it would have been D major resolution. I just didn't want to. I, you know, when, when there's an expectation, sometimes I rebel. Or it just didn't occur to me that we needed it. But yeah, if you want to develop the song further, you could put a nice D major um, chord pattern there and uh you know have a you know an amplified chorus to really you know take it another direction or enhance it or make it more multi-dimensional um but it's just a ditty you know it's what it is is kind of like we've been using this track me with the engineer and the the guy who's helping to put together using this track kind of like as a laboratory to test everything out so the re-release will be i think pretty interesting and then of course I'll be returning back to my album I'm working on, and um, that's that's going to be. See, what the artist doesn't realize with this album is that the sound coming out of the studio now is way different than what was there before.